Hi Pisces, welcome to your reading. <laughs> 2023 for you. We're gonna start with your first house, because by the way, this is primarily for a... Uh, I wanna say Aries. <laughs> for Pisces rising, and then for Pisces moon, and only then for Pisces sun. So, know your signs. In any case, whether we're talking about Ascendant, Sun, or Moon, <clears throat> you have Neptune domicile, you have Neptune in the first house, in Pisces. <clears throat> and for you, this is the, like, the, this is the best, out of all the signs, out of the effect of this Neptune transit, for all signs, you are the the ones who get the most of it, the best of it. <clears throat> because you're having it in your first house. And it's uh, it's best to have it in the either in the first, either in the twelfth. In any other house, it involves loss, it involves confusion. Uh, it's uh, far more complicated. But, but, <clears throat> for you, since this is your first house, and you've got domicile in the first house, this means that you have a proper insight into your identity, into yourself, into who you are. Because the first house is all of these things. It's your body, your identity, your demeanor, your sense of self, and the way you perceive yourself, and the way others perceive you as well, on a first impression and your uh, first choice always whenever you have a choice to make the your first tendency your first choice would always be dictated by the first house nature <clears throat> <coughs> now with domicile in this house there is an emphasis on who you are and since you've got Pisces first house, it's um, the higher manifestation of this transit means that you are getting a lot of insights into who you are beyond the physical identity, beyond the worldly identity. You're getting a lot of insight into who you are as the soul. You're getting a lot of insight into your spiritual identity and possibly even past lives and your avatars from other worlds and um, more or less avatars, let's call them incarnations from other worlds and your yourself in terms of who yourself is beyond incarnations so it's a really marvelous transit to have and the more you consciously focus on this, the more this will manifest as what I said it will. Because this is the highest manifestation of it. And whenever I do a reading, I focus on the highest manifestation so that you, you yourself focus on that. So that you guide that energy towards its highest manifestation. <laughs> now, obviously, if you have placements in the first house, this will get variations. But on a general level, this is what it is. And Neptune will continue to be there for 2023 as well. It's been in Pisces for some years. It's been in Pisces since 2011. And it will still be in Pisces. It will not change signs in 2023, so it's uh, ongoing. It's an ongoing process of diving deep into your Piscean nature. Your clairs may get amplified as well. Clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognizance, clairaudience. Um, your ability to communicate with other realms and your visions, and all of those 
psychic prowesses can get amplified. You may even see things from other worlds far clearly and your dreams can get a lot more symbolical and more and deeper in meanings and you may even um, get the nuance of those meanings of your dreams and all the symbols you're seeing all the omens you're seeing and start understanding that you you yourself are um, are a fragment of a great a, a divine greatness <laughs> i love you pisces now satan is going to move into your first house neptune will not get out of the first house so you will still have domicile but satan will get into your first house and to have Satan and Neptune in the same house, it's a clash of two worlds. Because Satan is the most materialistic planet, the heaviest of all planets, and Neptune is the least materialistic. It's actually nothing materialistic. It's all about the immaterial world. It's all about transcending the material. It's all about getting out of this world. And... Um, <clears throat> It's non-physical. It's a totally non-physical energy. You cannot take hold of Neptune. So it's, uh, it's interesting because you will continue to have this deep insight into your Piscean nature. Or if you haven't had it up until now, now that you know this is the highest manifestation, you can work on that. And actually, with Pisces energy, you don't really have to work that much. You just have to let go and allow this energy to flood you. <laughs> because Pisces and Neptune rule floods. So you can experience this whole Piscean nature as a flood within... Uh, uh, yes, a, f a flood within yourself. But um, Satan will get there. And whenever Satan gets into a house... It brings hardship, it brings obstacles, it brings heaviness, it brings things uh, like limitations and restrictions that, well, it is said that the highest manifestation of those, or, or the better said, the highest result of those would be maturity and gaining some discipline in, in whatever area of your life that is. But in itself, it will come with heaviness. So be prepared for this, because you may perceive yourself... I think is that it's hard to say the highest manifestation of Satan, because Satan is the lowest of the low. Satan is just the worst energy in the whole fucking zodiac. And it's it's basically Satan, the devil. So you will have the devil in your first house. This means that you will have a clash of materiality and immateriality in terms of your identity. You will have a clash a, a clash of societal norms, societal rules, which is what Satan governs, and escaping them, which is Neptune. Uh, you will have a clash of tradition and well here it can work it, it can work well uh, because Satan is tradition and Pisces is total spirituality. So you may um, to, to direct this energy in a better way would be to focus on traditional, uh, schools of spirituality, traditional teachings of spirituality, traditional spiritual norms, and um, you can focus on what it meant in the past, because Satan rules the past, uh, what it meant in the past to have a spiritual community, a spiritual society, because as I said, Satan governs society. You can meditate on what it means to have a spiritually based 
a system of norms in society and you may even teach others about that <laughs> but it's um prepare prepare for satan in your first house because it's um it's not that nice to have satan in the first house because satan also brings oppression so um for some people this may even manifest with tendencies because pisces gives tendencies um escapism tendencies so ironically you may start developing a tendency of oppressing your own self from the inside oppressing your own choices decisions in life uh, suppressing your own tendencies but even here you can turn this into a highest manifestation because you can use Satan's suppressing energy in order to put a stop to your self-sabotage tendencies, which is governed by Pisces and Neptune. Yes, Pisces and Neptune do govern self-sabotage. So you can use Satan's suppressive energy in order to put an end to your self-sabotage of any sort. And it's um, also a good time to analyze such tendencies and uh, basically restructure your whole identity, your whole sense of self, because Satan is about structure and having a solid basis. Satan um one of the again best ways to guide that stupid fucks energy and uh, satan is not even a fuck it's a shit <laughs> that su stupid shit's energy is to uh, <laughs> yes i hate i hate him um is to restructure your life basis wherever he goes. Thing thing is that Satan restricts anything he touches. So claiming this energy and directing it for your benefit would be to take to analyze the area of your life where he is and analyze the restriction that he brings because wherever he goes this restriction is you're basically left with the bare minimum in that area of your life so um you're left with the bare minimum in order to eradicate everything else which may be toxic this is the how you can direct this to a higher polarity and then, after Satan leaves that house and that suppressive, oppressive, restrictive, limiting energy leaves that house, you are left with a solid basis because, yes, Satan gives obstacles, but whatever structure you build through a Satan transit, that's long-lasting. Whatever withstands the obstacles that Satan brings, the, the result of that is that that structure is going to be very long-lasting. So your whole identity will have a new basis, a new solid basis. Your whole sense of self will be restricted to a bare minimum of what you understand through identity. And... After Satan leaves that house, you're going to be able to build on that afterwards. Because Satan also likes building, but Satan knows that in order to build, you have to build on something. And that's why the whole restriction 
to a bare minimum, which is meant to be the, the basis of a uh, structure. Build on that. <laughs> okay, it's... Um, I'm already 15 minutes into the video <laughs> and it's just your first house. You're gonna have Jupiter into your second house. This is quite a big blessing because the second house is money, possessions, valuables, and even your voice if you are into singing. So in this whole area of your life, you're gonna have a lot of blessings. Rejoice at this. And... um you're also going to have the node, the north node, in your second house. <laughs> this is fantastic. Because wherever the north node goes, this means a lot of resources gathering there. And this means that, well, the, the second house is the house of resources. And since the north node, which is an energy of... A lot of resources gathering in that area of your life since the north node goes into the second house area of your life which is money and resources and possessions well guess what this is going to mean not only will you have jupiter there you will also have the north node there from the midpoint of 2023 the the nodes will change mid 2023 so <laughs> mid 2023 you're gonna get a boom in this area of your life you're basically gonna get a lot of money, possessions, food as well, because the second house is food. Uh, your voice may also get deep tones, because uh, the, the North Node will bring some kind of depth to your voice. And uh, <laughs> yes, a lot of resources gathering in this whole area of your life, and it's fantastic. You already you have a a great forecast. Congratulations. <laughs> now you're still gonna have Uranus in the third house, which means you have a lot of innovation on your mind. Your thoughts, ideas are very innovative. You may even perceive them as some kind of genius ideas. The third house is ideas and writings. You may write a lot. And those writings mm, are very innovative and very new and, and shocking to many people and they can challenge the status quo a lot. Uh, also, your relationship with siblings and any kind of sibling figure, which is mates of any sorts, um, you, you may perceive them as very unusual and even shocking at points and surprising um, now the fourth house you have Gemini there and then there's been a long transit of Mars in Gemini for quite a while Mars is gonna get out of Gemini in March and uh, this means that your family is gonna be less uh, triggering <laughs> and less um, impatient and less angry and because Mars brings all of that and maybe you yourself have become quite angry at your family or about your home space or you might have wanted to have a new home space and you've become quite impatient about this and it's um things that Mars brings either conflict with the purpose of you um standing your ground and uh, stating your boundaries and having them respected uh, at the same time it's um also the case that you might have been uh in a position of fighting for your family or fighting for your home space or even fighting for your homeland uh, or for some of you there might have been a lot of fighting in your home space or homeland and um, 
it's also the case of a warrior figure in the home space, whether this is you or someone else. But at the same time, you have Aries in the second house. So to have Lord of the second house in the fourth house, this also means that a lot of resources, material resources, get directed to the home space. So these have, these have been the tendencies of this transit. Now, you're going to get the results of this by the end of this transit, which is after March 2023. And why I say that you're going to get all the results at that point, because it's... Um, um, Mars brings a lot of, like, a, a personal focus, a personal approach, a personal view. So... Uh, after Mars will get out of that house, you will be able to analyze this transit and the results of it in a less subjective way and see the benefit of it, even though it might have been stressful, because Mars may also bring stress. It might have been a stressful situation in your home space for some reasons. Uh, there, there will be some results of that. Because Mars is result-oriented and it's been in an aspect from Satan. And both of them are aspect uh, are uh, result-oriented. And um, <laughs> um, interestingly, Mars being your uh, second house lord, lord of your resources, material resources in this life, after he leaves Gemini, which is your fourth house, he will transit all the other houses up until Sagittarius. Which means that your resources throughout this year are gonna be directed in all these areas of your life, which is from your fifth house to your tenth house, which is the exact opposite house of the zodiac. <laughs> And this is nice. It's nice to analyze this throughout the year. Um, okay. Then you are going to have the south node move from the ninth house into the eighth house. And with the south node in the eighth house, there will be less of a focus on other people's money, other people's resources north node in the second house more of a focus on your own resources and um south node in the eighth house can have a dual nature it may mean less crisis in your life or more crisis in your life depending on other aspects why does it mean that because the south node is very much um, very similar to Scorpio, which is the natural eighth house, it, which is the eighth house in the natural zodiac. So mm, it has a very similar tone to it. And that's why it may manifest as a shutting off of crisis or an amplifier of crisis in your life at some points. And... Um, well, don't get panicked, it's not that much. It's not as if the North Node is in your 8th house, which would really be an amplifier of crisis. It's, uh, it, it, it may happen, but only at times. <laughs> and um, another thing is that you're gonna have Pluto entering your 12th house. And this is quite nice, because... With Pluto in the 12th house, this is, well, this is a big deal. Actually, you and Aquarius are the most blessed, at least in my opinion, out of all I've seen. Uh, Pisces and Aquarius are the most blessed by Pluto's transit into Aquarius. Because, well, Aquarius will have this transit in the 1st house and you will have it in the 12th house. And this means that Wow, <laughs> you are going to have a lot of insight into your dreams again, a lot of insight into your psyche and subconscious, a lot of insight into your past lives. You may even get memories from your past lives through your dreams, in your meditations, through your visions. 
You may even randomly hear spirits around you. The, the veil between worlds will dissipate for you a lot. And um, you're basically called into really amplifying your Piscean nature because not only will you have a lot of focus on your first house, you already have a lot of focus on your Piscean nature with Neptune domicile. You will have Satan there somehow amplifying your Piscean nature by restricting it. And yes, I know it sounds like a paradox, but this is how it will work. And you will also have Pluto in the 12th house, which in the natural zodiac is the house of Pisces. <sighs> oh, phew. So, um... You are called into embodying a lot and a lot and a lot more of your Piscean nature. And diving deeper and deeper and deeper in the Piscean ruled topics of life, which is again a paradox because the Piscean kingdom is that of transcending normal human life, transcending material life and getting into the unknown and un and unphysical, non-physical. <laughs> and with Pluto there, Pluto destroys and dismantles and restructures and purges and purifies. And basically Pluto gives a lot of power. And you are given for the next 20 years, because this is how long Pluto will be in Aquarius, you will be given the chance to, as I said, embody the, myst the archetype of the mystic, to become a mystic, to dive deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into Piscean topics. No matter what your realm of study is, you may even not need that much study into it because you will even be able to meditate on it and hear insights from the spirits around you and no reason to be scared, it's your spirit guides. And hear insights from either your spirit guides, either your own self, the soul you, insights about those things. You may even get a lot of knowledge from the non-physical realm by meditation or through the dreams but it is a, you cannot get this insight by not paying attention to it you you have to meditate on it and pay attention to it because this is what pluto asks it asks for analysis and deep analysis and diving deep into our psyche and pluto brings unification of the subconscious and conscious minds. This is why Pluto rules psychology, but not what currently humans understand through psychology, because it's majorly shit what humans understand through psychology at the current moment. Psychology, real psychology, is that of the spiritual. Is that of understanding how your subconscious mind is tuned not only to the past of this life, because this is just a drop in the iceberg. How your subconscious holds the memory of your past lives. And as I said, the soul who you are beyond your incarnations and lives. So all of that may you can hold the key of accessing that knowledge with this transit. But as I said, you have to dive into it because Pluto, the nature of Pluto is to go to the depths of the ocean, die there in the depths and then arise anew. Rebirthed. Reborn. Rebirthed. Sorry. sorry. Grandma. English is not my mother tongue. <laughs> and I'm doing the reading for Pisces. Pisces is about confusion. <laughs> Reborn. <laughs> so, as I said, diving deep to the, to, the, to the bottom of the ocean, which is your psyche. 
and rising and dying there, totally transforming yourself to the core of who you are and a transmutation of energy without coming back to who you used to be, without coming back there. It's a total transmutation of energy. And then, once you are reborn, you rise again to the surface with the knowledge of what you saw in the depths of the ocean of who you are. This is fantastic. It's very beautiful. I'm happy for you, Pisces. It's, it's a blessing. <laughs> I love you, my babies. And if you need guidance with this, contact me.